here we have Hank Kieler. Ha, Mr. <laughs> Good morning, Hank. Nice, nice to see you. Yeah, where yeah. are we? Uh, in one of the nice institutes in the Netherlands where we uh, do applied research uh, on adaptive robotics. Let's say the new trend in robotics uh, we're going to see worldwide. And we're educating uh, students, a uh, lot of students uh, today, on these new facets of robotics. And this is the Fontys University of Applied Sciences. Yeah, we are located in Eindhoven. Uh, Eindhoven, famous name in the, the world of electronics. The southern part of the Netherlands, yes, uh, indeed. Philips uh, started here his acti activities uh, more than 100 years ago, and that has uh, spread a broad uh, influence in the region, but in fact we'll know, we all know Philips worldwide. What Philips never paid attention to is robotics. Uh, they did uh, work with robots in the manufacturing, but not the new category of robots where we are going to see uh, robots being a partner of uh, uh, per persons, people on the work floor, on the shop floor. This region is known for its, its high tech, but as well its, its big diversity in products that have to be manufactured. ASML is one of the big uh, yeah. companies in this region. They don't sell hundreds of machines on a yearly basis. Every machine is a piece of dedicated work for a particular customer. And it reflects uh, in this part of the Netherlands, but in fact it's a worldwide trend where you see that uh, mass production more and more, yeah. more, more develops into uh, custom-made small batches of products. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, see that you call this adaptive? Robotics. Adaptive robotics is the is the new breed of robots that are going to assist workers on the shop floor to take care of this high variation in a routine uh, matter, relieving routine work from workers and uh, allowing them to concentrate on their best benefit for the production process, which is their skill, their knowledge, how to do things right rather than dealing with all the details. Well, first of all, uh, it's not my own work, but it's teamwork. And we have uh, some five or six teachers uh, who are heavily involved in as well education and in um, research projects. And they also have an obligation to look around what's happening in the world. So mm. uh, some of us are connected to international activities like uh, ISO standardization, robot safety is one of the topics. Uh, others are uh, joining conferences or uh, international fairs. And in that way, we try to, to absorb and think a year or two years ahead of what should we be doing, what should our students have in knowledge and capabilities uh, if they hmm. leave uh, our Fontys University. And that is also picked up by the industry. So they recognize that the themes we are working on are relevant for them and those are not big companies but mostly the small suppliers, the, 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 the people that have to deal with the quality and the, the flexibility, the diversity um, in, in their production. Um, one of the things in the Netherlands that's strongly developed is the fact that uh, a big company doesn't produce everything but is uh, relying on a network of very skilled suppliers. Uh, so even a big company like Philips or a big company like ASML rely on hundreds or thousands of suppliers. Mm. And those suppliers uh, are not just part, uh, participating uh, in delivering products, but they have their own responsibility in developing knowledge and manufacturing uh, state-of-the-art uh, products with state-of-the-art technology. So basically you're also telling that a lot of innovation is not so much coming top down, but more bottom up yeah. through smaller companies who can adapt new technologies exactly. and implement it yeah. and basically push it upward into... It's yeah. a two-way process where uh, initiatives from manufacturing companies meet uh, the, the, the longer term technology, te technological agenda of uh, the bigger companies. Hmm. And those small and medium-sized companies are typically the kind of companies that we involve in our projects to show them what's happening, uh, which, which way of working could work, what kind of place uh, could robot technology have in your uh, manufacturing environment and what could our students mean once they are mm. graduated uh, yeah. for your company. Yeah. Can, you, can you give an example of what, what is happening here or show us what, um, what it is? Yeah? Well, one of the things we figured out a few years ago is that this, this kind of new robotics 
uh, that is so easy to use that you can use it like a smartphone on one hand, but is also very flexible in dealing with day-to-day -day changes requires a different skill set. So rather than having like in a car manufacturing operation, having a lot of robots doing more or less the same job and a lot of top-down uh, controlled uh, robotization in your company, we more see that you have flexible help on the shop floor that is uh, directed by the workers. To have that kind of robots in a company, you need a special breed of students who are capable of dealing with that kind of new way of robotics. The knowledge is abundantly around. Uh, we are not teaching anything new, but we are combining it in, combining it in, a, in a new package, which we call uh, a course uh, adaptive robotics, which is now uh, the students that are here are participating in a minor course, a six-month course, where they learn what adaptive robotics means and what they can do with it. And uh, in a year time they are graduated and they take that knowledge into industry. Students uh, are participating in our minor course. Uh, right now they are busy with ROS, Robot Operating System, which is a worldwide uh, known system that has demonstrated how to control robots in a very flexible way and to do it hardware independent so not bound to a particular manufacturer and they are assigned to uh, make a mobile robot uh, move around with autonomous uh, navigation. Okay, so th this is an example of an autonomous robot. Yeah, this is a, a nice illustration of where you see that uh, scientific knowledge that was around since uh, uh, let's say five or six years is now used in, in our educational system to uh, teach students what has changed in the world of uh, robotics. So you learn them is how to configure existing modules into uh, an application. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's ev yeah. Every day if you come here and say, wow. Or <laughs> I'm enthusiastic about it, our team is enthusiastic about it, but I believe our students are also very enthusiastic about okay, it. Okay, good, good. Uh, no one is leaving here on Friday afternoon before uh, four o'clock or something like that. <laughs> a lot of time is spent here in the lab and that also uh, yeah. illustrates a little bit the chaotic manner because a lot of things are happening Out there. Out of chaos come, come you know, the most beautiful maybe, things. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm part of uh, an ISO work group modularity. That's a worldwide initiative to put forward standards for modular robotics. Uh, yeah. Think about the classic industrial case where you have an industrial robot and it has to be prepared for a particular task in production. Then you need to have the gripper and a wrist and force sensors and application software and everything starts from scratch and as soon as you change something in the running robot cell you have to start over again yeah, 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 and, yeah. and so we want to standardize robot modules and that goes not only about uh, mechanical parts, grippers and that kind of stuff, but as well about the control systems and everything in between. So that, yeah, yeah. that's a worldwide movement. Where yeah, I yeah. Contribute. very also involved with, yeah. Uh, I have my own company, I'm a part-time process professor yeah, here, so okay. I have my own company yeah. in mobile robots where we okay. uh, sell mobile robots as a logistic solution for the manufacturing industry. Yeah. And in the Netherlands we have this smart industry initiative which um, tries to bring together everything that's required to, f to make a competitive, flexible uh, Dutch industry. Well, the inspiration comes from your customers, that's the first that's thing. Eh? So uh, whatever you think of, if you create a technical product, you'll always be surprised by the fact that the first next question your customer is going to ask is just something completely different than what you have been thinking of. <laughs> yeah. Especially larger companies have their own roadmap but um, that roadmap is rather inflexible. Uh, small companies uh, in the country are much more flexible and those are the people who come up with those questions. So, more power to the smaller companies. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Certainly in the Netherlands, I think it's, it's some kind of a hidden force in the Netherlands okay. uh, with respect to innovation and, and uh, manufacturing power. Thank you very much for your time. I think it's really interesting to hear what you're explaining here on adaptive robotics. Yeah, thank you very much for having this opportunity of telling a little bit about what we think adaptive robotics is going to mean in industry in the coming years and what our students uh, in this uh, nice university do uh, on this field. And what a nice university it is. For sure, yeah, I'm happy to work here. Yeah, thank you very much.